Today on Matt Covers Tech, we talk about why you shouldn't buy this radio, or this radio, or this radio, or maybe even this radio. I know, I have a problem. I can stop anytime I want. That's today on Matt Covers Tech. Okay, so I'm sure I've ruffled some feathers already. What do you mean you can't buy a UV fiber? All right, everyone relax. It has nothing to do with spurious emissions or anything like that. Just hang with me and let me explain myself, please. I just showed you that I have a bunch of UV fibers, <laughs> And I do have a caveat at the end. I am not writing off the UV 5R by any means. So when you buy a UV 5R, a typical UV 5R, here's what you're going to get. The radio unit and the belt clip, which does not attach to the battery, that's always pleasant. You get an 1800 milliamp battery, you get the antenna, you get a cradle charger, and maybe a wrist strap, and maybe an earpiece that you'll never ever ever use. <laughs> so you get to assembling everything, and you're like, okay, cool, mm, that's awesome, yeah, that's great, and then you put your antenna in there, and you get it programmed on Chirp or whatever. If it came with a programming cable and you don't have to buy one, this one did not. I'll tell you, this one did not. This is the GT5R Pro. This did not come with a cable. Uh, this is the latest UV5R I bought, by the way. It's the GT5R Pro. So, there you go. And you start to use it, and it's okay. But you're like, man, I think I could do a little bit better if I had a better antenna on it. I think I could do a little bit better if I, you know, put an extended battery on it. Okay, fair enough. Awesome. So you go to Amazon and you start looking up stuff. And you're like, hmm, okay, well, everybody seems to recommend the Nagoya 771. So I think I'll get that and I'll get this extended battery that they have. It doesn't have USB-C, but that's okay. I'm going to go for it anyway. And you end up with something like this. And this is, which one is this? This is my GT5R. This one I use quite a bit. Um, so the GT5R, that's about 20 bucks. It's 19.99. Nagoya. That's about 20 bucks. And this, this particular battery is $15.99, I believe. It's actually come down in price a little bit. And this battery, um, this one gets you, I think it's $3,800. Yeah, $3,800. So, you know, that's awesome. You're like, okay, cool. I've got an extended battery. And you go like this for a while and you use this. And it works. And it works really well. And it's clean. No spurs. We know this. Baofeng's, you, the UV5R has been clean for several years. And f in fact, that um, the 5RTP that I got in 2019, it's clean. I've tested it. No spurs. So you run that for a while, and you're like, you know, golly, I sure wish I could charge this by USB-C instead, instead of having to put it in the cradle or use that weird USB cable that came with the battery. So you go out, and you buy something that looks like this and it's still a 3800 milliamp battery but now you've got USB-C charging on the bottom and that's awesome so you take this battery off put it to the side maybe you charge it keep it on hand that's cool and you throw this bad boy on here now this bad boy this bad boy was 20 bucks so so far you've spent 20 on the radio 20 on the battery 20 on the antenna that's 60 bucks. 60 bucks. And that's not including this that you bought, which is another 15. Now you're up to 75. Talk about death by a thousand cuts. My suggestion, my advice is to go in a little bit different direction, okay? I'll show you what I mean. Submitted, humbly submitted for your approval, the Baofeng. UV 9R Pro. Now, what is so special about this radio? Well, let me try to describe it. <laughs> this radio is $29.99 on Amazon right now, and there's usually a coupon for two or three dollars off. So, what do you get? Well, you get the radio, of course. Now, this radio claims to be waterproof. I'm not going to back that up. It says it's IP67. There's no way. This is not an IP67 radio. If you have an IP67 radio, you'll know right away. This is not, there's no seal on the battery in the back. It doesn't hold very tightly. 
there's plenty of places where water can get in, including the antenna jack. Um, it's just not airtight. And you can look at videos on YouTube of guys dunking this in a bucket of water and it fails. So I don't know why Baofeng is keeps saying that their IP67 rating, that's not, not a good way to um, earn your customer's trust. But I will tell you, I believe this is IP57 rated, meaning it can take a splash and it can take dust. And it's fairly rugged. It feels a lot better in my hand than the 5R does or any of the 5R models. It just does. That's a personal thing, but rounded corners feels a little bit beefier. Um, and I like it. I also like the keypad a little bit better. It's more of a um, one unified button with divisions rather than individual buttons. Um, also, if you turn it on, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see this. On the up and down arrows, there are windows for light to come through to light the keys to the left and the right, which I thought was a pretty cool little touch. Somebody knew what they were doing at Baofeng. Um, a difference here is that this is a Motorola style connector instead of a Kenwood. Some people are going to get bent out of shape over that. I understand it's not necessarily the most common, but it is common. Motorola speaker mics and Motorola compatible speaker mics are all over the place. Also, this radio comes with a programming cable. I didn't have to buy one separately. The battery, I'll show you the battery. It doesn't say it on the back, so I'll tell you what it ends up being, but it does lock in fairly tightly, which I like. So here's the battery. This is a 2800 milliamp battery. If you remember, the UV5R comes with an 1800 milliamp. This is 2800 milliamp. So you're getting a better battery. And look at that. Shucky darn. There's a USB charging uh, spot on the back. And it's USB-C. Huh. So that means when you go to charge this and you put your battery in, you can stand it up. It can charge in that position. It also, let me see if I have it here. I'm sure I do. Where do we go? There we go. It also... It does come with a USB-C charging cable, but it also comes with a charging cradle if you want to use it. Also a rubber duck antenna and the wrist strap. And no, I didn't buy this antenna. It came with the radio. This is an Abri or AR-771. I tested it against the Nagoya, and I couldn't tell the difference. I'm not saying everyone is going to have that same experience, but I could not tell a difference in receive or transmit. So this is basically like a Nagoya 771 coming with the radio. And all of this was $26, $27, $28, depending on the coupon for the day, as opposed to $60, $75 on the UV5R. At that point, I was like, I got to tell people about this. This is goofy. Uh, this radio just hasn't gotten a lot of coverage. I went to look for it on YouTube. I found a couple videos, but not many. Um, Smoking Ape had one, I think, and he tested it, and it's clean. There's no spurs. I tested it for power. I got five watts, five and a half watts on VHF, six watts on UHF. So, yeah, <laughs> it's putting out the power it's supposed to. The spurs, there's no spurs. It's clean. Also, one other thing that I like about this, some guys complain about this. I'm not sure why. The traditional Baofeng belt clip is that spring-loaded one that just attaches to the back. This one is different, and I prefer this kind. This is the latching style where this part goes on your belt. Some guys are like, oh, it gets in the way. I don't like it. Well, then take it off. And there's nothing there. You can literally just leave it off with that button in place. That doesn't get in the way. At least not for me. Now, I will say... In my personal opinion, the UV9R has a fuller sound in its speaker. I wanted to demonstrate this for you, but honestly, I shoot in my basement, and this is where radio signals go to die. So without getting super complicated, I don't really have a great way of demonstrating the audio quality difference. Also, it's super subjective. Also, my microphones are not that sensitive, but I do believe... In my opinion, this is a little bit fuller sounding than this. This sounds just a little bit thinner. It's not terrible. Now, 
both of these radios are dual band, VHF, UHF. But I do want to put one caveat out there that maybe this isn't the radio for you. Maybe. I could be wrong about that. If you're just looking to get into VHF and UHF, I would highly recommend this over a UV5R model. One thing that you might see in comments and reviews online is that this is not as sensitive as this. That has not been my experience. It is hit or miss. They're different radios. But this is just about as sensitive as this, as far as I can tell. I will say, one thing I have had to do with many of my Baofeng-style radios is adjust the squelch. I'm not talking about setting squelch from 2 to 1. I'm talking about going into Chirp, going into Settings, and then I think it's Advanced Settings or something along those lines, where you actually adjust a numerical value for each level of squelch. I had to do it on this, I had to do it on my UV5R TP, I had to do it on the GT5R, all of them. If you don't do that, the squelch on this could be too strong and not pick up distant uh, signal. Just my opinion. I will post the link over on Micklore where he tells you how to do this. Pretty much the same for every Baofeng model out there. You just have to use the correct model when you read and chirp and all that stuff. And remember to take a backup of the radio in its original configuration. Don't blow past that or you'll never go back. Um, one thing I do want to mention is that the UV, um, the UV9R Pro is only dual band. It is not a tri-band radio. Um, and neither is the GT5R Pro. However, the GT5R Pro does have something that this does not. This will pick up airband. This will not. I haven't done a full review on this yet, but I did check it for spurs. It's clean. Checked it for power. 5 watts on VHF and UHF. Maybe 4.5 on, on UHF if I remember correctly, but it wasn't way, way, way off. It was basically what you would expect. Doesn't come with an extra antenna. Doesn't come with an extra battery. So again, you're going to be spending more money uh, down the road if you want to upgrade this, whereas this kind of comes with that stuff right out of the box. So the choice is yours, obviously. I'm not going to tell you to not get a UV5R. I just don't think most people should be buying a UV5R, especially if you're looking for your first radio. I would go with this if it's going to be your first radio. Save some money, play with it, get used to the interface because the interfaces are identical. It's not the same radio on the inside, but the firmware, the software that runs the radio, the settings, they're pretty much identical. I can't find a difference. So if you want a UV5R that includes airband, get the GT5R Pro. If you just want something starting out that's a little rugged, that can handle UHF, VHF, and get you started on your technician's license, get yourself a UV9R Pro. That's my opinion, all right? So I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like and comment. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And remember, when it comes to tech, I've got you covered.